Hey everybody, I am back with another vlog, and today the topic is The Visit, the latest movie from M. Night Shyamalan. Yes, they are still letting him make movies. Still. So the story for this one, many years ago, the woman in this movie played by Katherine Hahn, back when she was 19, fell in love with an older man and ran off to marry him against her parents' wishes, and she and her parents have been estranged ever since. And over time, she and her new husband popped out a couple of kids and all seemed to be well for a while until one day he just suddenly up and left for another woman. So it turns out her parents may have been right about him the whole time. And a few years after that, her parents finally tracked her down through the power of the internet and they said, hey, we would like to meet our grandkids, please. And the mom still wants nothing to do with them, but she figures, you know what, if the kids are okay with it and they want to meet their grandparents, that's on them. And sure enough, the kids are cool with it, so the mother and her boyfriend go off on a Caribbean cruise for a week while the kids go up to say hi to their grandparents. And one of the kids happens to be an aspiring filmmaker, so she brings along her camera so she can turn this whole thing into a documentary. And that's how we get the found footage aspect of this movie. And as the days go by, the kids discover their grandparents just might be a little weird. Maybe more than a little. So this is... A very silly movie, which I imagine many of you probably gathered from the trailer. Yeah, it is very silly, although for the most part, the silliness appears to be intentional. It's not like The Happening, which was also a very funny movie, but it was funny for all the wrong reasons. This movie actually is funny for the right reasons more often than not. A lot of the comedy comes just from the interaction between the two kids. They are actually very funny together. The boy, whose name is Tyler, played by Ed Oxenbold, is apparently a freestyle rapper, because, sure, why not? <laughs> and uh, actually, some of his little freestyle rhymes end up being pretty funny. And the girl, Becca, played by Olivia DeJonge, as I said, is an aspiring filmmaker, and Shyamalan kind of uses her to, I guess, make fun of pretentious filmmakers in a way. Uh, there might even be a bit of self-deprecation in there as well. Like, there's a moment when they arrive at their grandparents' house and they see a tree swing that their mother mentioned that she used to play on, and she tells her brother to go stand by it, and he's about to just kind of give it a push, but he's like, no, 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 don't touch it. Just stand there. I want it to move organically. You want it to move organic? It's a fucking swing. Now, the problem with all of this silliness, while it is very entertaining, there are times when I found it a bit hard to tell when the movie was trying to be silly and when it was trying to be scary. The grandmother has a condition called sundowning, which is apparently a real thing that is commonly associated with Alzheimer's. Basically, what it means is she goes a bit nuts at night. And... Some of the stuff that she does gets captured on camera, and the way the kids react to it makes it a bit less threatening than it otherwise probably would seem. Like, there's a moment where the kids start hearing something that sounds like someone scratching on the walls, and so they open the door, and there's their grandmother standing there scratching the wall, butt-ass naked. Oh yeah, they don't hide anything either. And they immediately close the door, and Tyler looks back at his sister and is like, Becca, I'm blind. <laughs> so, like, moments like that, like, a scene that otherwise probably would be kind of freaky, but after that reaction, kind of hard to be scared by it, you know? There's also a certain line of dialogue that is spoken by the grandmother that I'm sure you all remember from the trailer. Would you mind getting inside the oven to clean it? I'm sorry, I can't be frightened by that, and I, I think the movie was going for a creepy vibe with this, but, God, it just sounds so silly. Maybe it's because the trailer ruined it for me, I don't know, but no. I'm sorry, I just, I thought it was silly. And there was one moment in particular where I kinda sat back and just went, come on, Shyamalan, get off it. Um... Tyler comes up with this idea about putting an extra camera downstairs so they can capture whatever weirdness their grandmother is doing at night. And at first, Becca doesn't want to go along with it because she wants the film to come across naturally and some other pretentious bullshit. But eventually she agrees to it. And the night they put it down there, 
the grandmother, sure enough, comes wandering into the room where they hid the camera, and there is a moment where she actually disappears from the frame for a second. <laughs> I'm not kidding, she actually just pops up out of nowhere and hisses at the camera, like, oh god, really? And immediately after that, she's walking around the house with a kitchen knife and starts pounding on the kid's door, and they're like, oh god, what is going on out there? But the whole time, I'm just sitting here thinking, come on, you can't scare me after that. You really can't. Just, no. No, it's too much. Apart from one or two brief moments in the movie, it doesn't really get legitimately scary until about the last 20 minutes or so when the twist is revealed. Because it's a Shyamalan movie, so of course it has his signature twist. And you know, not gonna lie, the twist was actually very well done. It, it was. It, it kind of got me. It probably shouldn't have, because... As soon as they revealed the twist, I thought back and, like, you know what? Yeah, they were kind of building up to this. I probably should have seen it coming. Maybe I was just so distracted by all the comedy that was on display that I just wasn't paying attention. But, but yeah, it's it's actually pretty good. I, I kind of liked it. There was one aspect of the plot that I thought was kind of pointless, really. Um... Tyler is apparently supposed to be a germaphobe, which is only mentioned twice, just once at the very beginning when they're on the train ride over to meet their grandparents. Uh, Becca just very casually mentions it on camera while her brother's in the bathroom. And it comes up at one other point in the middle of the movie when Tyler is freaking out because apparently he can't get his hands clean or something. But th those are the only two times it has ever brought up. And the payoff for this... I don't want to go into specifics because I don't want to spoil anything, but the payoff for his germophobia is something so disgusting that really him being a germaphobe doesn't matter because anyone would have been freaked out by this. I was freaked out by it just watching it. Everyone in the theater was freaked out by it. Like, oh my god, oh, oh no, oh hell no. But then I thought, wait, that was the payoff? That... That was stupid! As far as the acting goes, I thought it was pretty good overall. Uh, Deanna Dunnigan and Peter McRobbie, who play Nana and Pop Pop, their real names are never mentioned, they're just Nana and Pop Pop. I thought they both did a very good job. Um, again, there are some moments with Nana that are probably a bit sillier than what was intended, but that's not her fault. Her acting was fine. Catherine Hahn has a small part as the kid's mother, and I thought she did very good. And man, it's about time Shyamalan found some decent child actors again. These two kids were actually very good, and they played off each other very well. They were strong actors, their characters were not insufferable little shits, so when bad stuff started happening to them, I actually gave a damn. Just very well done on both their parts. The directing was pretty good for the most part, and one thing that I will give Shyamalan credit for, he really seems to get how found footage is supposed to work. The characters that are filming this documentary actually have a reason to be filming, and when there are moments where any normal person would put the camera down and stop filming, that's what they do. Like, the actions of the people behind the camera actually make sense. And you'd think that would be a given, but it's amazing how many found footage filmmakers do not obey this rule. Now, there are a few moments here and there where the video quality looks a little bit too good considering the equipment they're supposed to be using, especially whenever they're filming at night. It looks just way too good because, from my experience, consumer-level camcorders and even, like, the prosumer stuff does not do very well in low light, and the... Nighttime footage in this movie looks pristine. There are a few moments here and there where you can tell that this is definitely being shot by professional camera operators using professional equipment and not just a couple of kids with a handheld camcorder and a DSLR. But overall, it was very well done, and it is nice to see a filmmaker who knows how found footage is supposed to work, even if he doesn't do it perfectly. So, final verdict? You know... 
the movie does have some issues. It's far from perfect, but, you know, I kind of enjoyed it, actually. This, I, I still can't believe I'm saying this about an M. Night Shyamalan movie. At this point, we just expect them to suck, and maybe having lowered expectations was a factor here, but honestly, I kind of dug it, and I could honestly recommend seeing this as a matinee. I can't believe I just said that, but here we are. This was actually kind of good. It was definitely his best movie since Signs. At least, I might even put this above Signs, honestly. Uh, I, I wouldn't put it above Unbreakable. I wouldn't put it above The Sixth Sense. As far as just sheer enjoyment level, I don't know if I would put it above The Happening. As far as being an actual good movie, I would put it above The Happening, but, you know, The Happening is enjoyable for other reasons. But, yeah, this is actually one of his better movies, and I would say it's worth a watch. So there we have it, The Visit. Until next time, take care. And stay out of the basement.